Welcome! In this video I will summarize a learn to draw in one year challenge created by no other than Mark Brunet, an excellent art teacher. And I will finally find the answer to a question, can you learn to draw in one year? This video will be covering different sections such as who am I, why did I start the challenge, what was my initial goal, the review of my yearly progress, what challenges I faced, I will showcase my last illustration of the year, which is a part of December month. What I learned, what did I not learn, what is what to do next after you finish the challenge and the conclusion. Let's begin with who am I? You know, I've been interested in graphics design since 2020. More like a once in a while thing, but that led me to feel the need for drawing handmade images. <laughs> Here are some of my old artworks. Once I finished the middle school, the things started to speed up drastically. First I completed the monthly mark challenge, and back in 2023 my initial goal was to become a freelance artist, which basically meant to be good enough for hire. I quickly realized that the key to success lies in determination and motivation. Undertaking a long-term project like this demands a significant commitment, and discussing how to maintain that commitment could be an entire video on itself. You see, during the monthly challenge I developed a habit of drawing a little things every day. And it remained very helpful, that little thing that I drew every day was a gesture. Let's see how I improved upon them. For those considering a challenge upcoming year, here's a quick lesson on the essence of gesture drawing. Human pose can be broken down into two different categories, one being the figure, a simplified to basic shapes in perspective form, representing human body. The other one is gesture, representing the rhythm and flow of the pose with rapid clean strokes. Usually these two are combined to get the best of both words, create a lifelike looking pose, but with accurate structure. There's another nuance to the gesture that I will talk about later. Here is a month by month comparison, and I will quickly tack over key elements that change the way I draw these. We start with January. The beginning. January was not good. Not like I was expecting it to be. Most poses don't have a line of actions, are flat, there's so many unnecessary lines, besides them being taken from a cut in half references, so it's an uh, obvious disaster. <laughs> Here's a little recommendation from me. Try to keep your first gesture referenced for later exercises so you can see how much you've improved. The January in general is a great reference point, so keep that in mind. In February, I had two minutes for each, so I used fewer lines and sped up in general, but used flat, inaccurate shapes to represent the body. The symptom of that are these sausage-looking limbs. In March, back to five minutes, I started using the accurate lines of action, and I could afford to not lose 3D shape of the body. Still too much unnecessary lines on top of each other. In April, I had whole ten minutes, so I drew more accurate bodies, and started implementing basic anatomy onto figures. Getting confidence in my lines, applying simplified faces on top, which kinda helps you later down the line. In May, two minutes for each pose, I finally got to the point where my line confidence grew, my proportions are okay, and head to shoulder tilt ratio started appearing. Here we can see a significant improvement comparing to other two minutes gestures from February. In June, there was a figure drawing instead of gesture, 20 minutes each. Here I really started feeling that I can draw something good looking in a relatively short time, and I purposefully used sitting, jumping and back poses that I was not so familiar with back then. July, 2 minutes for each. I started adding more dynamic references to my list to focus on the movement of gesture. In September the focus shifted again to figures, but this time with color. And I will repeat what one kind person said in the comments and help me not to screw up this part. Try to not use references with the studio white background to get used to more natural lighting and color. By the way, don't ask me why I made Goja out of this pose, I just felt like I need to do that. Last set of gestures was in November and we got a lot of freedom in how complex we want to make our drawings, from 2 to 10 minutes. Here I went all in on the foreshortened and dynamic poses. Some would even say weird poses. Remember the one nuance about gesture that I mentioned earlier? The thing is that gesture is often referred to poses, but in reality everything can be sketched in a gestural way. Even the most stiff looking rock could become lifelike. That's the power of art. But this concept is quite hard to explain, so just remember, everything has a gesture. 
I think this is a very good way to depict my progress over the year, but there was many other tasks that I completed. Another good example of my progress would be the way I draw faces, designs or even full illustrations. Here are a few examples. The first illustration of the year was in January and you can see it's clearly not too good but it's a good starting point and uh, yeah, <laughs> just look at this face. <laughs> Another illustration was made in February, and it is much better than the previous one, you can see clear improvement here. But it still lacks things like setting your character accurate to background perspective, or... Uh, what was the other thing? Anatomy? <laughs> I had a very rough idea about anatomy back then, so it is just not too accurate. And for the next couple months I did not draw any illustrations, so the next one is from May. And this one <laughs> is probably the last and first fairy art I ever did. Um, you know, it was a part of an exercise where we pick an animal and we make a story for them. And later we do the animal but as a character of the story. In this case it's a detective looking for a cupcake teeth. This one is definitely a little bit more stylized. Okay, so next we move to August and I made two different designs during that time. One being for character and the other one being for the creature. The character is stylized as an anime protagonist for manga story. It was supposed to be a prince, but you, you can see clearly that there is a lack of one principle. These concepts don't really have a storytelling, because if I didn't tell you that he was supposed to be a prince, then you wouldn't know that, you could not read this from his design. He is also not a part of yearly plan, so I did it for fun. But the creature design was, and it was supposed to be a crossover of few different animal species, in my case it's anglerfish, snake, and I guess human too. But it's not over for August yet, because I also made an environment art during this time. And to be honest, I have to say that I do struggle with environments, they are not an easy thing for me yet and uh, I'm looking forward to learn them a bit more in the future. This one in particular was okay but it was not good. It lacks something, it lacks the vocal point and good composition. The next design is from October and it was supposed to be a mage hunter. Now this idea was very cool in my mind, it's not really turned out great. Again, it lacks storytelling, how would you know it's a mage hunter if I didn't tell you? Also the pose in the front view looks like he's about to fall. That's the symptom of something that I will talk about later. The next illustration is also from October and a short story about it. I actually found a job offer and they asked me to draw exactly that. Cocked looking girl inside of the park in anime style, sitting on the bench and holding a book. And that's the best I've got back then. Spoiler, it wasn't enough. My backgrounds for the illustration is still lacking a lot. I drew hell a lot in October because I also participated in Inktober challenge. And this is the one artwork that I did. The prompt was Overgrown Cemetery. And I really wanted to sell the creepy, melancholic, magical, cemetery kind of looking thing. So I don't know if it works but it's okay for me. And that was the last thing I drew before December. But before we deep dive into that, I want to quickly talk about what challenges I faced during this year. So the hardest part about this challenge is obviously time. So this challenge will take a lot of time from you. If you are working half time or even full time, you will struggle to find time and motivation for the challenge. There obviously will be days where you forget about it or just have something more important to do and that will create a snowball effect where you will no longer feel the need to complete the challenge and just drop it. For example, you can find on my channel a few videos that cover the months in depth but there is a lot of them missing and this is because along the way I lacked time to do both. I had to choose between learning to draw or recording a videos. So in the end I decided that drawing is more important for me and this is not learn to do YouTube in one year. So you see, you will have to make some sacrifices in order to achieve your goal. And we are finally in the December. Final part of the challenge was to design your original character in front of an environment and color everything. And if you can, do it from imagination to check your progress. Let's start with the design. And the design itself is not really a design from scratch, it's a redesign of my old character that I did uh, around a year ago and I can describe him in one sentence. 
He's a mythic desert creature that guides the lost in the dunes to safety. And I will cover every step of this redesign so you can follow along easily. Step number one. Make notes. Before I took a pen and started drawing, I created a design board. I thought about basic information such as name, species, power and even occupation. Oh, I know what he would do all day. How about eternal servitude? If you want to create an interesting character, you have to consider three core things in their story. Number one, what is the goal of the character? Number two, what abilities do they have or will have to achieve their goal? And number three, how do they look? The part artists are most focused on. But if you are creating something from scratch, you need to remember all of them. There is plenty of detail that you could think about, and if you do, it will definitely make your character more interesting and real. But remember, not to overthink it. In the end, you are not creating an entire book, but believable background for your character. Step number two create a bio. I created a bio for my character, and I know you won't read it, so I will do it for you. <clears throat> Known as Sandwalker, he's a mythic figure in the desert, believed to be a ghost guiding lost wanderers through the dunes. In reality, he's a mortal soul bound by the ancient pact with desert deity. A sacred ritual granted him immortality in exchange for servitude. His human soul bound within layers of bandages is the source of his power. Serum tears from his eyes possesses remarkable, yet twisted healing properties, and can revive the dead. As a symbol of the pact, a loyal companion, manifestation of the ancient god wit, accompanies him ensuring his duties are fulfilled. Over time, the Sandwalker's soul stirs with unintended desire for freedom. The guardian companion's role becomes crucial in maintaining the balance between his earthly duties and his longing for liberation. The story might be quite difficult to pull off, so here is the next step. Get feedback. Ask your friends, family or even AI what do they think about your story and update it if you discover something that seemed interesting from your conversations. For example, this way I decided to add a companion to his side. Step 4. Choose a body type and pose that would fit the character concept. In my case, I picked a very skinny body and stayed with the pose reflecting a simple but confident stand. Remember, this is just a concept sheet, so there is no real need for overcomplicated dynamic poses. Stick to something clear, but with a little hint of the character's personality. Step 5. Sketch your design ideas. Try to keep them distinct from each other. I ended up with three designs, one being a floating nomad, number two was heavier on the undead part, and the idea of a log for the soul of Sandwalker was born, while the key is held by his companion. Design three. I wanted to give him a cape and the bandages coming from the back, floating behind him. All of these designs were once more sent for a short feedback session to my friends. And here is the interesting part. I was also able to use AI to get feedback on my sketches. It's not always able to read your intentions properly. Design 3. This design is very similar to the first one, but with one major difference. The companion has wings. What? Where? But it can produce some accurate insight that pushes your thinking. For example... Does he have some kind of vision ability? Or does he rely on his companion to guide him? That's the reason I gave Sandwalker more defined space for the eyes between bandages. Step 6. Close the doors. Combine the things you like and implement them in the final design. As well as define the things that will not work and avoid making more iterations of them. You could spin the ideas further or make some sketches of actions with the character if you want to. But I was liking the one I made. One last thing I wasn't sure about was hairstyle. And this might be shocking for some of you, but hair is one of the most important design elements when it comes to characters. It can really make or break. So in the end I decided to give him a ponytail, but with a little twist of his hair flowing like ephemeral things. Step 7. Preparation. Lock silhouette in and find out if it's interesting and reads as your character, giving them distinction. Check out the proportions, gather reference, Oh, and in the end I actually decided to use references, but only for a few things and mostly in the design stage. Things like clothes, a fennec fox which I literally never drawn before, a mummy looking character, a hand pen and lock. And yes, some of these references are AI generated. Step 8. Refine your design. In this stage I still think about the story and the function of the character. 
testing different ideas on the new layers, I thought about how exactly would he guide the lost, and came up with an idea of an instrument that can be played with one hand, so the lost would follow the sound of handpan till they reach safety. And how would he carry such instrument? I was also thinking about the story of the character. Why does he have one hand? Maybe because it was a sacrifice during the ritual. Or why can't he just grab the key from the fox? Whose, by the way, known name is Dune. Do you remember when I told you about the core aspect of the character? In Sandwalker's case, his goal is to free his soul from the pact, owning the power of the same god that is caging him. But he can't do it himself. He would have to convince other mortals to steal the key and free him. I also tried to implement the idea that the intimidating nature of Sandwalker would cover Dune, who is in the end a more powerful being, but looks much less threatening. Sandwalker's bandages are covered in blood mixed with dirt, indicating that not all orders from the deity are peaceful solutions, and those who did not return to tell the tale of a mysterious guide had met more terrifying fate. Symbols of an unknown language, perhaps extinct for ages, appear on both characters, linking them together. And this is how I tried to handle the storytelling of this character. After that, I use different brushes and apply material texture. These come from Krita Default's brush pack. Step 9. Add colors. I usually start with grayscale to clearly see values and color at the end using gradient maps. I was aiming for a complementary set of colors, one being orange and the other one being blue. The thing is that bandages are white, but when you put them in a natural desert environment, the shadow of them should look blue, giving us desired color composition. Also, I don't have this part recorded because my file was so heavy that my Krita kinda crashed a few times. And after some final touches, we can move to another step. But before that, I want to tell that usually in this stage, you would do a back pose or a callouts of elements that are not clear. But because I am the one using this to create illustration, I will have no problem to identify what's behind the back of the character. And we finally can get to the illustration. Yay, not yet. First, we will do a thumbnails. And here I meet my first big problem. I don't know how to pose a character from memory. You see, I should not be able to use references in this part, and that creates a hell of a lot of problem for me because I never drew a pose from imagination before. That is a good pose that fits the character. So before I started doing thumbnails, I decided to sketch a little bunch of little poses of my character, and my first thought was what this character would do in his time of existence. So I imagined a few scenes where he does some pose. For example, him pointing a direction to someone, because he's a guide. Or him wandering through the deserts, or him fighting some, let's call it, obstacles. And after that I tried to act out those poses. How would I do these things to feel comfortable? And after that I chose few poses that I liked and made a thumbnail out of them. We have few such as Sandwalker walking through a sandstorm, causing it to split out. Sandwalker pointing direction to a lost traveler. Sandwalker exiting the tomb, where he made the pact with unknown entity. And a rare moment of Sandwalker having a free time to play his handband while sitting in oasis. I tried to keep the thumbnails relatively simple because I'm not too good in foreshortening and dynamic camera angles. And here once more, I had to call my friends, talk to my family, use AI to get the feedback I needed. And turns out everyone liked something else about these. There were many different opinions. My personal favorite was the C one. I liked the mysterious look and the shadow, but I thought it could not represent this character well because I am not trying to portray him as a villain. And that's why I went with B. And again, I will guide you step by step how I made this illustration. Just for the record, I will not be able to fit the whole footage in. This thing has like 14 hours, so even at speed time, 25 it's too long for this video but if you are interested ask me in the comments and I will post it for you step 1 clear the thumbnail the first thing I did was flatten the color again removing the light from the character then I started with the background I wanted it to look half done but it was quite a struggle so we will return to this task quite often step 2 add flats to the character since I already have the color in the background I added flats to the character 
and I also adjusted the background color because it looked kinda dull and desaturated. Step 3. One quick AI feedback later, I changed the pose and the position of the sandwalkers and continued my struggle with the composition and background. I added more shapes to the sky, which by the way is completely wrong, do you know why? And I also added the light to the background. And at the time I finally thought that it was good enough for this stage and headed into step 4. Apply preview lighting. In this step I tried to use a big airbrush and figure out the light direction and how it will appear on my character. And I also made some adjustment to the clothes. I know this is, uh, looks like a crap now, but I had trust in the process back then. Step 5. Rendering? Well, my process is chaotic if I look back into it. What I meant to do is paint over the character details loosely for folds and bandages, with loosely being the keyword. What I did was not entirely loose, but I could not stop when I started, so the order ended up being reversed. <laughs> If you want to detail something at this stage, it should be the vocal points. Step 6. I considered my vocal points to be in order. The face of the sandwalker, his hand, his chest, and the face of Dune. Step 7. Render the material. Once I was done with the face, there was nothing left to do on the character besides rendering the material such as metal, cloth, and leather. Material variety makes a big difference when it comes to making your image interesting. Step 8. Paint the hair and get the feedback. When I finished painting hair, I once again looked for feedback. This time I visited the discords of Trent and Mark. They have special channels for people helping each other with the drawings. And I don't know if you knew, I also have my secret discord server, dedicated to artists. It's a much smaller but cozy community, where we all learn together, share our process and sometimes I even do live study sessions there. It's a secret, so don't tell anyone. <coughs> When submitting an image for feedback, you must know that it will sometimes come instantly, sometimes arrive next day, or never at all. My concerns about composition and the vocal points arrangement were shared with a kind user named Keisu, who replied, I think your focal points currently are the character's eyes and the dog's collar. You lead the viewer from the tip of the character's fingers and towards the dog, and I think that works great. I believe your problem lies in the colors. I checked the values and they were good. Specifically, I think you should add more atmospheric depth to the distant landscape. Make it more blue, essentially. An idea for if you want to make it more complex is vary the sizes and shapes of the buildings more. If you add too much detail, it's going to distort the perspective, so don't go too crazy. Also, I think the floor your character and dog stand on should be separated properly from the distant landscape and preferably some ambient occlusion under the dog's paws, so it looks more grounded. And they even shared an image. Very helpful. Whenever you get a response, don't forget to thank the person that used their time and help you. And if you can, show them what changed when you applied their advice. It's even better then. Thanks to them, I finally realized. The sky is upside down. <laughs> so I went and corrected my mistake once again, taking care of the background, spending an entire hour on a distant city that nobody may even notice. Step 9. Rendering the companion. As you could notice, I prefer to keep the lines of the painting until I eventually paint over them, leaving the places that I missed with defined edges and dark value. Right now I'm trying to reshape Dune, essentially going from face to four to the details such as metal and bandages. Once that's done, I'm adding a terminator, bounce light, drop shadow and checking values of the whole image. Step 10. The final background rendering. Same as the variety of material on the character matters, the variety of background elements helps a ton. I tried to make rocks appear in the foreground and a sand desert in the middle ground. This is where I once again resorted to using reference, since I barely ever paint rocky landscapes like this. Now that the background is finally done, never but Final touches, like stronger light and filters. What I would usually do before shipping an image is adding a noise filter for some additional detail, then gush and blur, and remove it from the vocal points to sharpen them and make the viewer eye notice them first. Then I apply color correction using adjustment curves, gradient maps, or the camera raw filter if I happen to work in Photoshop. W which I don't, by the way. Probably never. Yeah. And that's how my submission for December, a final representation of what I learned, looks. And here is the thing. Did I actually achieve my goal? Did I learn to draw in one year? 
that is for you to decide. Since I can't tell myself if my artwork is objectively good enough, objectively means that it appeals to the most of the audience. So do you think that I am actually employable with my current skill set? Would you pay for a similar artwork that depicts something you want? Please let me know in the comments. And meanwhile, let's talk about what I did not learn from the challenge. First thing first, there was no mention in the challenge about material and textures. I know this might seem like a non-important detail, but as I mentioned, material virality is pretty important for the final image. I kind of learned it on the way, because I used references when I drew something with a different material and texture so to learn it, but it's a shame I never did a dedicated study of that. And of the bat, another thing that I wish I learned better is face. You see, I can draw face from a reference, I can draw face from a memory, but it's not always looking good. Maybe because I was learning it in February, which is basically the beginning of the challenge. But on the other hand, where would you put it? You need it for later, so it's kind of a tough one. I think face needs more practice in general, because it's hard. Just look at those things. Out of these aspects, I probably only know the proportions and form. Also a little bit of expressions. And remember, everything has gesture. And about those things that I wish had more time, anatomy is another on the list. Though I maybe know surface anatomy just a little bit, this topic is so complicated that you're not gonna learn it in one or two months, like a whole anatomy. I still have only rough idea where the muscles are, and I'm actually really excited to learn it in the future. Where the anatomy is a building block, I can't quite understand how to put poses from a memory, and it probably will come with experience, and until then I should probably stick to the reference poses, do not repeat the mistakes I made back then. Okay, the next few on the list are a little bit advanced, so I think they should not be in the challenge. And what I'm talking about here is foreshortening. It's a very tricky skill to learn, but it is used quite often in a professional illustration. I'm also looking forward to learn it. When it comes to professional illustration, they not only use foreshortening, but also combine it with dynamic camera angles, which is the subject I never explored enough. It leans heavy into composition. When it comes to composition, the things I struggle with is environment design. Environments require quite a different skill set from me, and I'm also the character type of guy, I like to draw characters more. Though I do not neglect that environments are necessary, I don't want my characters to float in the white void forever. And that would be the list of things that I feel like are missing from the challenge. I've done the challenge, what to do next? I don't know how you feel about your own skill, but if you are like me and you dream of joining the industry of the artists, you should probably start building up your portfolio. That's what I'm planning to do. Doing portfolio takes quite a while, maybe around a year or even more. Depending on the niche that you are going for, like concept art, illustration, fine arts or whatever else might it be, you need to specifically set up your portfolio for whichever you choose. So decisiveness is a key here. Which sucks because I still have no idea, do I want to do concept art, illustration, maybe both or whatever else, but I do lean more towards illustration. Are you interested in seeing me complete my portfolio from zero to employable? <laughs> and if so, subscribe to my channel. Something tells me that I may have more time for YouTube this year. And if you're watching thus far, please like the video, it took a while to make it. And the last segment of the video, the conclusion. In the end, I still feel like there's a lot of learn to me and I don't feel like I learned anything, but this may be just because I have imposter syndrome, like every artist and my voice is telling me that I'm not good enough. But for real, I know that I've improved quite a lot from the last time. Just compare these two images together. In the end, the verdict is yours. I want to give Mark special thanks for making this schedule that pushed me this far on my art journey. Special thanks to everyone who helped me along the way, either by sending comments or being with me there on Discord. Have you completed the challenge? And if so, did you feel like you learned to draw in one year? Let me know in the comments. And for those who picking up the challenge this year, oh boy, you don't know what you're getting into. But I wish you luck and consistency. Personally, I'm leading my sister and my younger brother through the challenge this year so they can learn too. Let's see how it will go. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. See you maybe in another month. Gesture.